am a former Catholic, and I am now an evangelical, so I know you understand where I'm coming from. Sure. Could you please explain uh, the Catholic teaching in light of the New Testament regarding purgatory? All right, Sandy, thank you for that fine question. Yeah, I would say this. Uh, first of all, Jews have always prayed for their dead, before Christ and up to this present day. You know, and as C.S. Lewis, who was a believer in purgatory, though he was not a Catholic, you know, he and others have pointed out that if you're praying for your dead, you know, if they're in heaven, they don't need prayer. If they're in hell, prayer's not going to do them any good. So, you know, where are they? Well, in Hebrew, there's a term Sheol that is not the same as what we would call Gehenna. Jesus speaks of hellfire as Gehenna. Sheol is the place where the righteous mm -hmm. and the unrighteous went. And that's why the Jews have always prayed for them. So even if you don't have 2 Maccabees in your Bible, if you read 2 Maccabees 12 and you discover that the, the prayers of the, for the dead are being offered then and by Jews today, you can see why. Because they really believed that there were people who could benefit. Well, why? Well, what was Sheol in Hebrew becomes Hades in Greek. Again, it's not to be confused with Gehenna. Hades is an intermediate state. When it's translated into Latin, it's called purgatorio because it's a place of purgation. It's a place of purging, cleansing. You know, Hebrews 12, 29 describes God as a consuming fire. Now, we often associate fire with hell, but actually the imagery of fire is more commonly used in the descriptions of heaven because that's where the, the seraphim, the burning ones who are the closest angels to God, seraphim literally means in Hebrew the burning ones. They're burning with the pure love of God. And so it is, we have to be filled with the Spirit to have that love purify us. And in this life, we have our chance to really follow Christ. But you'll notice that Paul states in 1 Corinthians 3 that there are some people who build on the foundation of Christ with gold, silver, and precious stones through works that really represent the Holy Spirit reproducing Christ in us. Other people, Paul describes as building with wood, hay, and straw. That work, he says, will be burned up. But he goes on to say this, and it's so important. The work which any man has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. If, if any man's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. So he will suffer, and he will suffer and lose as he passes through the fire of the Spirit who will purify all of these false good works. Now, if time flies when you're having fun, Time slows down when you're not. When you pass through the fire of judgment, which exposes the false, you know, the inadequate or the superficial good deeds that you've done. When you pass through the fire of God's love as judgment, you know, that might, might take, you know, five minutes, but it might feel like you know, a lot longer. <laughs> but Paul is describing people who are going to be saved, but only as they pass through fire, and they will suffer loss but they will be saved on the day of the Lord Jesus. What struck me as a Protestant was, if I had a thousand epistles to write, I would never have penned those verses. <laughs> I would never describe someone who is passing through fire, suffering, and yet they're going to be saved. And yet Paul, as a good Jew and a good Catholic Christian, can write this sort of thing in a matter-of-fact way, just by way of reminder to kind of jog the Corinthian memory that we, we ought to be careful how we allow the Holy Spirit to build in our lives gold, silver, and precious stones, not the counterfeit works that those who are saved but are going to end up having to suffer a great deal as they pass through this fire. And we're, our evangelical brothers and sisters often miss the point of that is their emphasis often merely on saved or not. That's right. You're saved or not. In fact, a good portion of those look back to a time in the past when I was irretrievably saved or not because I was once saved, always saved. And so this whole concept doesn't fit their categories because they have that emphasis. Right. And it's also a different view of sin, what sin does. Yes, indeed. Because sin is not just broken laws. Sin is a broken life, a broken heart, a broken home. And so the Holy Spirit comes as the fire to restore that love. But we often say yes and don't mean it. Or we often say yes and then end up kind of turning our backs. And so, you know... The, the Catholic doctrine was not something that I could understand, but I remember wrestling with this text, going back to the Jewish tradition of prayers for the dead, the Jewish notion of Sheol, the New Testament notion of Hades, which is not the same as hell, Gehenna, and then suddenly I could see why the early fathers would speak of a place like Purgatorio as a place where the Spirit purges 
the, the, the leftover dross yeah. to purify the gold so that we can yeah. enter into the Not presence of God. Not a second chance. That's right. You know, these people are going to be saved, but only passing through fire and only after suffering loss. How could Paul write this apart from believing in what the Catholic Church explains later on in terms of purgatory? Well, I th it makes, I can't remember which verses, I think it's in First John, where it's, and I, maybe it was Paul that talks about us, our desires to stand before him without embarrassment. Right. Well, Paul that's what happens. So does First John. Yeah, I mean, that's what happens. That's why purgatory. S you know, if we haven't lived perfectly in this life, well, then purgatory so that we can stand before him without embarrassment, without hesitation, purely cleansed in the right clothing Nothing of the wedding feast. Nothing unholy can enter the presence of God, and yet when we die, we sometimes have that lack of holiness left that the Holy Spirit has not yet completely uprooted.